Okay. So I guess recording has started. Okay. So in the last class, um, we were uh, we just finished with module eight, uh, which is which was the power dividers and directional couplers, and uh, now today we'll start with module nine, microwave filters. So um, let's just quickly go over what we did in last class, and if you have any questions, you can ask them now or reach out to me via email or WhatsApp. Uh, I I've also shared the course feedback link in the WhatsApp group. Uh, I'll probably email that as well once to the entire class. So the uh, feedback form is uh, must if you want to get your course completion certificate. OK, so we'll quickly do a recap. Okay. Um, so the, um, I'll also share a couple of assignments. I think uh, we have done it till module four. Uh, for the last couple of modules, we'll, I'll probably share and uh, two assignments probably for all the modules together. So in the last class, we were looking at the Wilkinson power divider and to study the Wilkinson power divider, we 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 made this equivalent circuit, uh, emit equivalent circuit, and then we uh, used uh, the odd even an analysis to by, uh, by uh, like reduce the circuit into two uh, into, into its half and to two uh, under two conditions for example when we gave 2 volt or uh, plus 2 volt or minus 2 volt um, so depending upon uh, how we are giving these vg2 and v, vg3 voltages we were able to simplify the circuit and then evaluate them separately to um, get the required values for example this input impedance under even mode the input impedance under odd mode and similar, uh, our goal was to get the value of uh, this, this Z value and this R value for the resistor and the uh, uh, transporter with transmission line length. So we did, uh, we, uh, we discussed all this mathematics in detail in the previous class. So I hope this is fine. So, um, so this is this is uh, just uh, a number of steps uh, which you have, uh, like you have to do diligently and then uh, if you do your due diligence and you will end up with all the required values and finally the uh, experiment as for the uh, Wilkinson power divider. So uh, if uh, once you have evaluated everything, we are using the Z input values and the vote, voltage at port one and port two uh, uh, for the even and odd conditions, we can use them to get the S parameters for the Wilkinson power divider. So that's all uh, we, we we covered for the Wilkinson power divider, and then we um, use the this knowledge to uh, discuss the un unequal unequal power division. So uh, under unequal power di division, the the uh, this quarter wave transformer lens will change, and sim uh, similarly, this R values will change, but uh, uh, I need not worry, the, here are the formulas. So uh, just in case you're preparing for gate or other examinations, you can uh, you can um, keep this uh, formula in your mind. Or uh, you can also try deriving it for, for the scope. Uh, uh, for the brevity of this course, we won't get into depth of this derivation, but if you want, you can uh, do this. Then we looked at the four port network directional or uh, the directional couplers. And uh, since it is a four port network, uh, we, we discussed this. this is how we represent a directional coupler and here uh, here is uh, the S matrix and if it is matched at all, all ports and uh, so terminal limits become zero. Similarly, we, if we impose other conditions to uh, get uh, get these equations and you, by, by evaluating these equations, we we reduced, we, keep, we kept reducing the number of unknowns until we got the uh, final uh, S matrix for uh, asymmetric coupler and anti-symmetric coupler. We impose certain conditions and I also left this as an exercise that we have 
that we had to show that any reciprocal lossless matched core put network is a dashel core. So um, all, everything, the, all the mathematics has already been covered. You just have to argue based on the mathematics that this, this is the only yes matrix that can be achieved under these conditions. Then we discussed uh, the coupling, directivity, isolation, and such a loss. So these are very popular terms uh, in the field of micro circuits and antenna design. So if you either you are, whenever you are uh, designing any multi port network, uh, you will you will uh, end up having a discussion over the coupling, uh, the directivity, the isolation, and the insertion loss for that network. And then uh, we we briefly discussed about uh, symmetric and anti-symmetric couplers. For example, the quadrature hybrid, or uh, the magic D. So they are the symmetric and anti-symmetric. Uh, cases of uh, the directional couplers. So we start here today. We will start with microwave filters. So the microwave filter uh, is a actually a two port network which is used to control the frequency response at a certain point in RF or microwave system by providing transmission at frequencies within fast band of the filter and attenuation in the stop band of the filter. So maybe I'll quickly to the pen to draw this. So, for example, this is this is your spectrum, right? And we uh, we don't care about the negative frequency. So, this is the frequency axis, and this is the directional frequency axis. And let's say this is the uh, power level of power at that frequency. Okay, and you're working on certain system, you have a uh, system and uh, your system gives out a range of frequencies. You get a number of frequencies and you only want certain part of it. So you want only a certain range and uh, you want to reject the uh, uh, all the frequencies which are which do not lie in that band. So, um, for example, you uh, you are uh, you are, you have a you have a signal. Uh, you have your out your uh, system gives out the power. Uh, this is the power level of the all the frequency ranges, and you're only interested in the frequency uh, frequencies inside this band. Okay. You're only interested in the frequency inside this this band, right? So what you need to what you need is is a system which can reject all the frequencies which lie out of this band. So we have we need something which can reject these frequencies and just keep only these frequencies. Now for this, what we can do is we can cascade a system. Whose frequency response looks something like this. The frequency domain, if we uh, are multiplying, uh, like cascading the system. So this is what will what this system or this filter will what it will do. It will only allow this this uh, this range of frequencies to pass. So it will multiply it with one and for the rest of the uh, frequency ranges it will multiply it with zero and uh, qualify it so this is the idea so uh, we we cascade the system with a filter and the filter only allows the uh, frequency range to pass through it and rest of it is uh, uh, rejected so uh, this is this is what a micro filter essentially is. So and based on your needs, you could either uh, you could have uh, you could need a filter which allows low uh, lower band of uh, you could need uh, the lower band and you want to reject the upper band, or you could uh, you could uh, you you could need all the frequencies above a certain uh, above a certain frequency and you want to reject the lower band and you want the upper band 
you could also uh, end up needing uh, a certain range only which we just discussed now and you want to reject whatever uh, is here or you could end up with needing uh, all this frequency range and you want to reject something which is in the middle so this first one is called a low pass filter the second one is called and called a high pass filter because we are allowing the higher frequencies to pass this is called a uh, band pass filter and this is called a band stop filter so because we are stopping a certain range of frequencies or band reject filter and uh, so filters are essentially actually very important and they find their application in uh, almost every microwave circuit which is out there uh, whether it is your laptop phone radars uh, everything um, and everything is using filters because we uh, all the all these devices work at a certain uh, like frequency or within certain range of frequencies and our uh, receiver could uh, capture unwanted signals as well so what we do is we reject them as soon as they are received okay some trivia for you oh, the, um, i have scribbled over here but uh, what it is written is that this, the development of filter theory uh, began um, just before world war 2 where um, the pioneers for example mason sky sykes uh, Dar darlington fano lawson richard so uh, all these people were involved uh, in the advancement of filter design and later in the in this module we'll also look at richard's transform we uh, you might already be familiar with Bode, Fano, uh, Limit. Uh, so uh, they are they're very popular scientists and they all contributed to the filter design. So uh, the first topic that we'll discuss under uh, microwave filters is periodic structures. So periodic structures are essentially what makes uh, the, the, the simplest kind of uh, uh they make the simplest kind of filters for example you, you can see so this is this is a pcb and we have some micro strip structures on uh micro strip patch structures on the upper surface um, so uh you, you we, we see a transmission line with uh, these open uh circuited stubs in series and over here we have um, we have a waveguide which has uh, this uh, which ha which which has this uh, particular uh, structures uh, in the in the direction of the wave propagation so um, so uh, all these discontinuities or the structures they can be um, like uh, they can be modeled as uh, for very very short distance so they can mod be modeled as lumped circuit elements and uh, uh, the repetition, uh, the the repetition um, at periodic distances uh, creates an effect of uh, either pass band, stop band, uh, high pass, low pass of nature. So we'll we'll look uh, look at the maths now. Um, so essentially, the, what I'm what I'm trying to say is periodic structures are the simplest kind of filters, and uh, how their periodicity affects this uh, pass band, stop band. We'll look at that. So um, before that. Um, Let's just uh, go over this theory that infinite transmission line or waveguide is periodically loaded to reactive elements this is an example of periodic structure. So, um, so any transmission line or waveguide which has uh, which has a certain element, for example, a lumped inductor, capacitor, or a discontinuity, they can be uh, they they can uh, they are basically example of periodic structures. And often these uh, discon uh, often these uh, discontinuities. Um, uh, the this loading element for example we want to if we want a capacitor or inductor uh, we we what we do is we introduce discontinuities in them uh, for example a series stub short stub a uh, 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 parasitic gap uh, all these can be used to uh, model the lumped reactant uh, to model this uh, to model uh, the loading elements and they and they can be uh, easily uh, they they can be uh, they can be 
modeled using the lumped reactances or shunt uh, on the transmission line so um, so over here what we have is a 3d structure which is which is a micro strip and has uh, the shunt uh, sorry series open circuited strips uh, but to do the mathematical analysis we can we can simplify it to a uh, to a transmission line which has uh, which has uh, a shunt uh, uh, which which has lumped elements uh, in shunt with the transmission line so we can re reduce this uh, complex circuit okay maybe i'll just show this one. so yeah you can see this uh, both these circuits can be simplified to get this uh, uh, simplified to get the simple tra uh, transmission line which has uh, this um, jb shunt element added in uh, 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 this jb element added in shunt with the transmission line so this is both of them are periodic. Okay. So um, we'll we'll start with the analysis of this periodic structures. So this um, so all the periodic structures they can uh, they can be modeled either using series or shunt elements over here. We, have, uh, we we are using these uh, this shunt elements and so um, if you look at this unit cell uh, just over here we uh, at this at this nth position we are noting the voltage as vn and uh, the uh, at the next uh, just after this uh, jb element the voltage has become vn plus one and similarly the currents are given over here and jb is the shunt element and we are referring to this unit cell and each unit cell, uh, like the distance between these two is D. The characteristic impedance of this transmission line is Z0 and the propagation constant for this uh, waveguide structure is K. So um, as I said earlier, the periodic structures have pass band and stop band characteristics similar to those of filters. Um, and we'll look at that. So each each unit cell consists of a length d, and uh, the normalized characteristic impedance is z naught, and the susceptance is given as b, uh, and so which is the this element added in shunt with the transmission line. So considering uh, this particular case as the case of infinite uh, infinite uh, transmission line, uh, and it's a, we have the uh, shunt element uh, periodically arranged on the transmission line we can uh, we can simplify this particular structure uh, with a repetition of this unit cell where we have this transmission line section the shunt element and then a transmission line section and this particular unit cell repeats so then again we'll have the transmission line section you uh, this shunt element and then transmission line section so this is how uh, this particular structure is being repeated maybe i can use a pen so we have a transmission line section from here to here then this shunt element and then a transmission line section and then this whole unit cell this repeats okay so we are considering that this particular thing is infinite so that we don't have to worry about uh, the edges and we can right now just focus on finding the ABCD matrix for this particular unit cell. So uh, for the ABCD matrix, we, uh, we already have the voltage and current at both the ports. And if we, uh, for now, let's just say that the, the ABCD matrix is given as ABCD. It can be written as this expression over here. Sorry, uh, just give me a second.
Okay, I hope I'm audible now. So um, for this uh, for this unit cell, the we know uh, we have marked the current and voltages for at, at both the uh, at uh, at both the ports for this unit cell. If I just consider this unit cell, which uh, which are V n and I n and V n plus one and I n plus one. And for now, let's just say that the ABCD matrix is given by the uh, this particular matrix over here with entries A B C and D. So uh, this is I hope this is clear. And now what we can write is this ABCD matrix as a combination of, as we discussed, a transmission line section, the shunt element, and the transmission line section. So the, uh, this is the uh, ABCD matrix for uh, the transmission line section uh, for the uh, length uh, D, which uh, we are now writing as uh, this DL, uh, sorry, uh, KD as theta. Yeah. So this theta over here is KD. K is the propagation constant of this unloaded line. So the when we uh, yeah. So um, without this JB, um, if the there was this transmission line, its propagation constant was K. So this theta is KD, and then this uh, the ABCD matrix for this shunt element over here is given by this matrix over here. And same again, we have the transmission the ABCD matrix for this transmission line section. So this total length was D and so this half length is D by 2 and hence we have this theta by 2 over here. So and once we multiply all these three matrices, we end up with this huge matrix over here. So this is the ABCD matrix for this particular unit cell. Now uh, for the for a transmission line um, and a, uh, with a wave propagating in the plus direction, we can write the voltage and current by this expression where uh, this is uh, gamma is the propagation constant of the wave. Now uh, the voltage uh, and current at the n terminals can differ from the n plus one terminals. So mm -hmm. let me just switch over to pen. So if this is your nth terminal and this is your n plus one terminal and uh, for transmission line we are writing this expression over here so uh, we can uh, we can relate the voltage uh, vn and in with vn plus one and in plus one by using this relationship and we can write rewrite it like this so uh, the, uh, the propagation constant uh, for the transmission line is gamma and the transmission line length for this unit cell is D. So within this unit cell, uh, we are taking the, uh, the two ports, so Z and zero, for example, zero was the initial value and Z is at any instant. So taking this V zero at uh, reference over here, we can, uh, re, uh, we can write the voltage and current at the uh, other port of this unit cell. So this gives us this expression over here. So we we now have Vn in terms of uh, Vn plus one in terms of Vn and propagation constant and the uh, distance of this unit cell. Length of this unit cell. So uh, taking this expression over here, Vn, In, and ABCD matrix and Vn plus one and In plus one, we can write it over here. And also we can uh, write this Vn, In uh, in terms of uh, with respect to these, so just taking this uh, inverse over, uh, taking this uh, e power minus uh, gamma d terms on the left hand side. Similarly, for both these expressions, we can write this v n and i n right like this. Then, in comparing these two expressions over here, we can uh, yeah. Um, so, we, what we what we have done is we have just uh, <coughs> Taking both these uh, elements on the same side, so taking the left uh, this matrix, maybe I'll use the pen again. So okay. So if we take this matrix on this side, we can just subtract it uh, and remove this. Make this equal to zero. Point of, and upon doing that, we can take this V n plus term in common. And uh, so we have the identity matrix over here, right? So if we take this common and then write the identity matrix, then we'll end up with uh, 
e power gamma d term and then the identity matrix zero zero hello arnav yes uh, i have one means like a question here uh, regarding okay. this uh, are we doing only for unit cell uh, abc analysis right now yeah right now we are just focusing on this particular uh, this uh, the limit this cell. unit cell. yeah this this unit cell we have over here we have okay. considered we are considering this uh, to be infinite and just we are focusing on this unit cell and then we will uh, just say that since this uh, the whatever results you obtain for the unit cell can be generalized for the entire periodic structure because it the periodic structure is made of this unit cell okay but then final what we can say about abcd parameter of total structure if we have to propose somewhere something like that uh, i could not follow your question can you can you please repeat uh, as we are doing right now for unit cell right yes for single and uh, if we have to propose like total structure abcd parameter will be so how we can propose that way or okay uh, to write only unit cell only uh so um, like your question is how can we write the abcd parameter for this entire structure this yes, structure yes yes okay so um, i think that uh, becomes a, uh, a let be complex problem but, um, because uh, for an infinite uh, like structure uh, we have will have this even if you are able to write the unit cell for uh, like the abcd parameter for the unit cell uh, we 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 will have the, uh, this unit cell cascaded in infinite times Uh, so that will be very difficult but if we know the number uh, how many unit cells we have then we can write it uh, more uh, efficiently so i'll have to look into it how do we uh, write if we have the abc disparam uh, uh, like matrix for unit cell and if that is repeated for n number of times i'll probably have to look up how to do that but uh, for, uh, right now what yeah. uh, what we are trying to do is uh, instead uh, instead of uh, writing it for the entire uh, periodic structure we are just uh, focusing on one unit cell and since this particular whatever this property this unit cell offers um, the, uh, this will give us gives us give us insight uh, such, uh, such uh, some insights which will allow us to show that this periodic uh, the periodic structures can behave as filters okay okay thanks thanks yeah so i know this uh, this but all this mathematics is actually um, like uh, to be very honest uh, uh, very boring because uh, uh, once you start doing the mathematics uh, like especially listening to or reading it the first time um, we don't get a very clear idea of where is it going but once we will uh, like uh, conclude uh, towards the end of the maths uh, we will will be able to make certain assumptions and we'll be able to make certain comments about the uh, property of this uh, this in this periodic structures so um, you'll have to bear with me for some time to, uh, until uh, we reach the conclusion uh, equations like where we conclude what we are trying to do so right now uh, right now just right now we are uh, our goal was to write the abcd matrix uh, for the this unit cell and that we have done uh, now and we are trying to simplify it with whatever knowledge we have so for this unit cell so this unit cell ha uh, has three parts um, this transmission line section the shunt element and another transmission line section and so we wrote the uh, abcd parameters for all the three we multiplied it and got this matrix over here now again uh, so again we are looking at this expression over here and we can uh, rewrite this vn and vn plus 1 uh, in terms of each other with uh, using this uh, knowledge of a transmission line so this is this was the expression that we got and now using that again we can uh, simplify this uh, abcd parameter like this now we'll use these two uh, again in the next slide to uh, get more information so uh, we had this expression over here which uh, saw we saw earlier and again we had uh, we rewrote the uh, vn uh, plus 1 and in plus 1 in terms of vn and in using the transmission line uh, theory combining them 
we got uh, this expression over here where we uh, uh, wrote this vn and so these two were written in terms of matrices and this is this term over here and then we simplified it to uh, get this matrix okay so um, i hope uh, this uh, okay you can try doing this maths by yourself so this uh, this is just uh, taking these two terms over here on both uh, keeping them on both the left hand side and then doing some matrix calculations and you'll end up with this now uh, for a non trivial solution for this particular uh, uh, equ equation um, the determinant uh, uh, must vanish so just taking a determinant and equating it to zero we uh, get this expression over here and now we know that this particular since this particular system is uh, reciprocal you can see it visually or you can also uh, work uh, on the uh, the structure um, to uh, check whether this is reciprocal or not but uh, assuming uh, like as not assuming we know that this is a reciprocal so uh, we uh, so if uh, for reciprocal networks we can write this as ad minus bc equals to 1 so if we can use this information ad minus bc becomes 1 so, and we get this expression over here and we can use this to simplify and uh, get uh, this co uh, cos hyperbolic gamma d is equals to a plus d by 2 and now this particular uh, term is equal to cos theta minus b by 2 sin theta and we are able to write this from the other expression that we got right maybe I can, if you remember, we uh, we had written the ABCD matrix of this term, uh, this shunt element, and uh, this term as well. And when after multiplying, we had got a very big matrix, a huge matrix we had got in the previous slide. So taking the individual entries A, B, C, and D. So this was, for example, this A and this was D. So if just adding them and subtracting them by two or uh, so dividing them by two we are comparing that with this cos such gamma d on the previous slide so maybe i'll rather quickly go over here so this uh, just plays a pointer okay so this was your this is your a this is your d and using this a and d you just add them by put them by two and could compare it with this expression over here so this 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 is the expression that we end up and uh, now we know that gamma is given by alpha plus j beta so we can substitute this alpha plus j beta inside this expression we'll so we get this cos such cos hyperbolic can be written as uh, this uh, this cos hyperbolic alpha d cos beta d uh, plus j sine hyperbolic alpha d sine beta d and now this entire thing is equal to cos theta minus b by 2 sin theta so these uh, so this expression can be written as expanded like this and this is equal to this expression so now if you compare both of them the this expression which is purely real and uh, and this expression is uh, contain, uh, containing real and imaginary part so uh, this expression is purely real so this implies that this imaginary part must go and uh, to do that we can either have alpha 0 or beta 0 or uh, beta is pi as well so uh, so we now we focus on making this imaginary part 0 so up till now what we what we did was we uh, took our periodic structure then uh, made this equivalent circuits uh, where we had the, the discontinuity or the lumped elements modeled as this uh, shunt uh, susceptance and uh, since this was periodic we divided into unit cell we wrote the abcd parameter of this unit cell use our knowledge of transmission line theory and uh, this abcd parameters to um, write the uh, uh, simplify this abcd parameter and then uh, knowing that uh, this but uh, no for non trivial solution uh, the determinant must become zero we recorded it to zero knowing that we uh, it is reciprocal we again simplified it got an expression for the propagation constant and now with, uh, for this propagation constant we are saying that uh, either alpha or a beta must be zero 
So we we got this expression from the, the previous slide. So where uh, this cos hyperbolic was equal to cos theta minus b sine theta from the two ABCD matrices that we got, and uh, this cos uh, cos gamma d can was uh, this cos h gamma d. So with uh, expanded this hyperbolic function to uh, equate them. Now this imaginary part has to become zero, and this will lead us to two cases where either alpha is equal to zero and beta is not zero. So in this case, uh, this corresponds to a, a non attenuated propagating rate. So you can see um, since alpha is zero, that means the, uh, the attenuation constant is uh, zero. So there is no attenuation and we have non uh, non zero beta, which implies we have uh, we have the propagation constant is not uh, zero. So we have a non attenuated propagating wave in the periodic structure. Which defines the passband of the structure. So, for uh, solutions for uh, this, uh, the gamma equal to uh, gamma gamma equal to alpha plus j beta, where alpha becomes zero. This become uh, for this uh, uh, this this is the case of non attenuated propagating wave. And under this condition, this uh, cos beta t. So this this uh, alpha be, uh, is zero. So this term uh, becomes zero. This uh, over here alpha is zero, so this, this term becomes one, and this term uh, cos beta d is equals to cos theta minus b by two sine theta. Now the uh, other case where uh, where we have beta zero so, uh, or uh, beta is pi, uh, then in that case, uh, and we have alpha non-zero, and in this case the wave does not propagate. As you can see that. Uh, the propagation constant is either zero or pi, and under that condition, uh, the wave does not propagate. But since uh, the we uh, initial when we uh, wrote the ABCD parameters for the transmission line section, we uh, wrote it for a lossless line. So uh, so since this line is lossless, but we uh, we have uh, attenuation co constant as non-zero. It means all the uh, no power is not dissipated, but it is reflected back to uh, the input line. So uh, all the power is reflected back, uh, and uh, no, and uh, the wave does not propagate through the um, periodic structure. And in that case, um, this particular again this term becomes zero. And since uh, this is cos uh, alpha d, uh, the, uh, and depending upon either it is uh, this beta is. Zero or pi. Um, this will be either uh, greater than uh, z uh, greater than one or less than minus one. So these are the two conditions that we get for the alpha and beta um, for the uh, periodic structure. So again, uh, this is written in terms uh, in in just text that uh, based on the value of this beta, if it is either zero or pi, this particular term will be either greater than one or less than minus one, and uh, yeah, and um, for the case of uh, when this is this be this is beta is equal to pi, this will be the case when uh, the this will be when the uh, the lamb loads are separated by lambda by two distances, and this will mimic the same effect as beta equal to zero. So uh, de thus, depending upon the frequency and the normalized acceptance values, so which that is the uh, the value of theta. Uh, so we can write the theta as uh, a d, right? So depending upon the value of k or uh, this b value, this acceptance value, we can we can uh, get uh, either pass bands or stop bands uh, uh, for this periodic structure, and hence we can uh, make this periodic structures or we can consider this periodic structures as types of filter. So um, this was all uh, that we. Uh, we had to discuss for periodic structures. Sorry, I did not uh, take breaks in the middle because uh, this entire thing had to be uh, like explained in one go. So, if you have any any questions on uh, how uh, like what happened, we can discuss that again. Or uh, any particular point that you want to discuss, we we just wanted to show that periodic structures can uh, work as uh, filters, uh, and periodic structures have pass bands and stop bands. So all this discussion is uh, pre presented in very detail in uh, codes R, and I have seen often that uh, many course instructors do not uh, like uh, attend this uh, uh, mathematics for the periodic structures. They usually 
start the filters with the image parameter method or the, uh, the uh, or any other method um, we it is uh, just we consider this as a known fact that periodic structures will act as filters but how and why is not usually discussed so we did try to uh, look at some mathematics uh, aspect of this and if you have any questions you can ask them now um, i'll just pause over here or we can we can take the questions uh, later as well maybe maybe i can uh, briefly try to conclude what we did was we took some periodic structure And then we simplified it to transmission line, which is loaded with the 10 elements and shunned. And for our simplicity, we kept it to be infinitely long so that there is uh, no ambiguity in our considerations. So we, we took this periodic structure, we wrote them as transmission line, simplified it to focus on just one unit cell. For this unit cell, we wrote down the A, B, C, D parameters. And uh, doing algebra on this A, B, C, D parameters, we found uh, conditions on gamma. And this gamma told us that we can have either alpha or we'll have either alpha or beta equals to zero. And this gave us knowledge that we get pass bands or stop bands depending upon the frequency and this susceptance value. So uh, this is briefly uh, uh, what we tried to do. So um, if you have, um, uh, maybe I'll pause for some time and then uh, if you have any questions, you can ask them. Otherwise, we'll proceed to the uh, next topic that we have to do, which is filter design by uh, the image parameter method, I believe. Okay, so maybe no questions. Um, you can give this and give the topic a little more reading. Um, and this is used. This content is math heavy, and uh, it sometimes uh, it is difficult for us to grasp things if we don't follow the math at once. But yeah, um, so I did mention a flowchart of what we did. So that was the idea. Uh, you can take your time, write down the mathematics, take a pen, pencil, paper, what. Uh, write it down and you will be able to uh, like understand because uh, just take your time uh, it, it is not that difficult uh, it's just that uh, yeah you will have to uh, pay, pay close attention to the steps that will that better now um, so two uh, two popular techniques which uh, are taught in universities and used widely are the filter design by the image parameter a parameter method or the uh, insertion loss method. So we'll discuss both of them. We'll uh, starting with the image parameter method. So we won't be able to uh, finish this today. We'll we'll just uh, do all the mathematics to get the uh, the image uh, value, image impedance values, and then we'll do further discussion in the next class. So um, this is. Uh, let this particular block be your filter. Okay. Or uh, this is your two port network. And uh, so, okay, right now we'll just forget about it and that this is a filter. Let's just focus on this is a two port network and you want the, uh, you want the image impedance values at both the ports. Okay. So um, now what these uh, image impedances are, this will become more clear. So 
so this is this is uh, any arbitrary uh, to port network and uh, we have uh, we have uh, we are giving uh, like we are we have labeled this voltage and currents v1 i1 and v2 i2 uh, uh, in convention with the abcd parameters and the input impedance looking from this from uh, the for port 1 is zin1 and uh, from the port 2 is zin2 now the image impedances denoted by zi1 and zi2 are the uh, so input impedance at port 1 when port 2 is terminated with zi2 okay so if we are terminating the uh, port 2 with its, its image impedance we we will see certain input impedance at uh, this particular port and this what what the impedance that we see is the Im image impedance at port 1 and similarly um, the input impedance at port 2 when port 1 is terminated with zi1 okay so the, when the port 1 is terminated by the image impedance, the, in, uh, the input impedance which is seen at port 2 is the image impedance at port 2. So uh, this, is, uh, this is like a loop. So to get the uh, input uh, image impedance at port 1, you need the image impedance at port 2. And to get the image impedance at port 2, you need the image impedance at port 1. So um, now that we have uh, defined what is what is the image impedance, let's uh, let's uh, uh, let this uh, lambda element be there with the uh, this two port network. And now we'll try to uh, write down the voltage and current values to uh, evaluate the zi1 and zi2. Okay, so this two port network is now terminated with zi1 and zi2 on port one and two. And uh, okay, so now we we derive the expressions for the ABCD parameter parameters of this network. Okay, so um, writing the uh, port uh, voltages and currents for this ABCD. Network, we can. Uh, this is this is known to us. V1 is equals to A V2 plus B I2, and I1 equals to C V2 plus D I2. So this is this is standard from the ABCD uh, parameters. And now we uh, we can write the input impedance at port one when port two is terminated with Z I2. So this Z I2 is terminated over here. And uh, if we try to write the input impedance uh, at port one. This will be V1 by I1, and uh, once uh, and we can uh, this V1 by I1 can be written from the these two expressions over here. So we are dividing them, and uh, what uh, what we have is V2 is equals to Z I uh, I2 into I2. This V2 is uh, this voltage. Uh, if since this is terminated by this uh, Z I2 over here, we can uh, write this. Uh, this is the potential difference and this is the current flowing through this impedance. So uh, V2 can be given as Z I2 into I2. And using this uh, V2 value over here, we can simplify. Uh, this becomes Z I2 into I2 and uh, this I2 becomes common in all these terms and this uh, we can uh, remove it and we end up with A Z I2 plus B C Z I2 plus D. Similarly, um, we can solve it for V2 and I2 from this condition over here. So maybe I'll just quickly write this. So if we, we have uh, V1, I1, A1, and I2 equals to the ABCD matrix, the ABCD matrix, as, and then v2 i2 so um, we can just uh, take this matrix on this side and take an inverse and write uh, v2 and i2 in terms of v1 and i1 and uh, we have this knowledge uh, that this is a reciprocal network the ad minus bc equal to 1 
So in for using that, we will end up with V2 and I2 in terms of V1 and I1. And now again, we do the same thing as we uh, did over here for ZIN, we will do it for ZI2, ZIN2. So um, ZIN2 is minus V2 by I1. So this is minus V2 by I2. So this is V2 and uh, this is This, uh, so current has to be taken in this direction. Hence we are taking this negative sign, and upon doing that and uh, substituting v uh, v one is equals to minus z i n one into i one. Okay. So substituting this okay over here. Substituting this over here, we can simplify and get z i n two like this. And now what we uh, need is that zin should be equal to the image impedance uh, at port 1 and we need zin2 which is the input impedance at port 2 equal to image impedance at port 2. So um, this condition uh, from here and this condition from here okay so we can equate this zin equal to uh, zin2 is equal to zi2 okay so upon equating this equal to zi2 we get an, a relationship between zi1 and zi2 and similarly if we make it zi1 and if we equate it to zin1 we get a relationship between zi n1 zi1 and zi2 so we get the uh, from the two expressions we get these two uh, expressions and if we uh, solve them okay so from the first set of v1 and v2 in term uh, v, v1 and i1 in terms of v2 and i2 we got zi n2 and using these two expressions we got zi n2 now making zin1 equal to zi1 and zin2 equal to zi2 we got these two expressions and upon solving them we get the image impedances in terms of the abcd parameters so now we have got the image impedances and uh, since the network is symmetric uh, then in that if the network is symmetric in that case zi1 will be equal to zi2 so for uh, symmetric matrix this image impedances will be equal which is expected so maybe I'll just pause over here. We did quite a lot of mathematics. Um, uh, I'll let you read it. If you have any any difficulty in any of these steps, please please let me know. We have a couple of more slides, and then we'll end for today. And then we'll be start with the same discussion again in the next class, uh, and then conclude the uh, filter design by the image parameter method. Okay, so uh, we defined the uh, image impedances and then to find out the image impedances, we terminated the circuit with the image image impedances themselves and we tried to find out the input impedance at both the ports and then we equated the input impedance at both the ports with uh, the image impedances and finally found out the, uh, the image impedances values in terms of the ABCD parameters. Now, um, just consider uh, this circuit over here where uh, we have the image impedance uh, of an at like uh, attached to both the ports and we now have this particular uh, source added over here which provides 2v1 uh, voltage at the port 1. Now, in this case, we can uh, write down uh, this uh, 
the uh, voltage at port 2 uh, v2 as dv1 minus bi1 so from the uh, from the uh, abcd uh, pa uh, parameters matrix this is this is possible we can write uh, the v2 in terms of v1 and i1 and upon taking v1 common we can uh, put this uh, impedance value in the denominator the image impedance value now since we have v1 is equals to i1 z1 for this term so uh, upon taking v1 common we had uh, i1 by v1 and we can uh, we had written this, written this as image impedance value and now uh, just taking this in the denominator we can write d minus b z i1 is equal and now substituting the value of the image impedance over here we get this expression this is the final expression and then similarly we can do this for the current as well so i leave this mathematics up to you and we can we get this two expression so over here what happens is this a y d term appears in both the uh, expression so this fact uh, so we define this factor a, a by d uh, as the transformer turns ratio transformer turns ratio and apart from this factor we can also uh, define the propagation factor so if you notice this particular term is same in both the uh, expressions and we call this we define this as e power minus gamma and this is equal to root over uh, ad minus root over bc and uh, again since e power minus gamma we have defined uh, it as root over minus ad minus root over bc we can uh, again find out e power gamma just by taking inverse of this and this turns out to be root over ad plus root over bc and sim uh, and then we can write the cos h gamma by value as e power gamma plus e power minus gamma which finally turns out to be root over ad so this is where we stop and uh, the two common types of two uh, two port networks are the t network and the pi network which can be made in symmetric form so we'll continue our discussion uh, in the next class from here so um, and any questions uh, from the mathematics that we did till now or any other questions that you want uh, like you have you can ask them now or we'll we'll end this class for today and uh, continue our discussion in the next class on the image filter design by the image parameter method so also uh, okay so before we end so this is this is this table is also present in posar so um, this defines um, the image parameters for uh, t network and pi network so a t network has uh, this t shape structure where you have uh, so this became a plus where you have um, this elements over here and pi network looks like a pi so if you write a pi this will look like this and this looks like a t so um, for a t network which has these lambda uh, elements uh, on the branches we can define the abcd parameters like this and then the z parameters like this and the image impedance can be now for um, calculated by using the uh, abcd uh, formula that we just derived and similarly we can define the propagation constant as well and similarly for the pi network as well so um, we'll continue our discussion in the next class maybe uh, and uh, okay so today we covered uh, the periodic structures and image parameter method and next class will finish image parameter method and work on the insertion loss method hopefully we'll complete that as well and uh, hopefully that will be the last class maybe next class should be the last class and if you are not able to cover the insertion loss method maybe maybe we can take up one more class as well so um, any any questions you have uh, otherwise we can end for today
so if there are no questions um we uh, will end this today and the class for today and uh, we'll continue with our discussion uh, on the period uh, this image parameter method in the next class and we'll try to fill wrap up this course the next class or by the next to next class okay i'll try to try to share the assignments uh, this week yeah thanks for joining